Hello and welcome back to the channel. In the last two episodes of Los Angeles History, we went over the settlement and culture of the Native Americans of the LA Basin. Today we'll focus on the next major checkpoint of California history, the first arrival of the Spanish. More specifically, the voyage of Juan Rodriguez Cabrillo, and its implications for Los Angeles and the rest of the region. Before we begin, please help the channel grow by subscribing and liking the video, which brings it to a wider audience. Also click the bell button to be notified for new updates and consider sharing with your friends and other lovers of history. There is not much known about Cabrillo or his voyage in that most of the information is from secondhand sources usually written decades after his death. There is however an unsigned document that had daily log accounts thought to be from Cabrillo's voyage. Found in some old archives during the 19th century, it was later published amongst other records about the first explorations of Spanish America compiled and edited by Buckingham Smith. The book was named Colección de Varios Documentos para la Historia de la Florida y Tierras Adyacentes. As Cabrillo's official log was lost to history, this document must have been compiled from tales of sailors who might have been with Cabrillo, or from secondhand stories of those who may have known the details closely. But this is uncertain. It is from this text that I will use later to describe parts of the voyage. But Juan Rodriguez Cabrillo was believed to be born in the late 1400s on the Iberian Peninsula. Whether he was Portuguese or Spanish is still debated hotly by historians and Spanish and Portuguese communities alike. Regardless of which kingdom he was born into, Cabrillo grew up in the shadow of the famed explorer Christopher Columbus. Columbus had claimed the New World for Spain in 1492, and while his later voyages and a governorship were not successful and led to Columbus's downfall, the lure of adventure and riches must have enticed many young men, Cabrillo included. At some point around 1510, it is believed that Cabrillo sailed with others as part of a colonizing expedition to what is today Cuba. Not much is known of what he did during these early years, but his skills in piloting ships and commanding troops years later suggest he spent most of his time in naval and military actions against the natives of the Caribbean. His name does not appear again in history until nearly a decade later, in 1519, when he is listed on the roll for Hernán Cortés's expedition into Mexico. There he commanded crossbowmen, and survived the many battles with the great civilizations there. There he saw the great riches of the Aztec Empire, and it's possible he would have also noticed how men like Hernán Cortés, born into relatively mediocre standings in late medieval Spanish society, became wealthy and powerful with land, title, and gold through the conquest of powerful native civilizations. This would have been reinforced by the conquest of the Inca by Francisco Pizarro a number of years later. These events sparked a gold rush of sorts, with new local governors and private investors financing and participating in expeditions to search all over the North and South American continents for more wealthy civilizations. Cabrillo himself made a tidy fortune creating a shipping business, and off of the legal slavery of the encomienda system, which will be discussed in later videos. But it should be known that even with his growing riches, Cabrillo undoubtedly dreamed of more fame and glory. By the early 1540s, Cabrillo had what he believed to be a stroke of luck. When the Viceroy of New Spain, Antonio de Mendoza, asked if Cabrillo could take charge of an expedition up the unexplored Pacific coast, he jumped at the chance. And with that, Cabrillo began to prepare for the journey. Earlier Spanish exploration of the Pacific coast up to that point had reached as far north as today's Sea of Cortez. Francisco de Ayola's expedition established that the land to his left, today's Baja California, was a peninsula and not an island, although legends and tales of an enormous Isle of California were still widely told for centuries to come. The land itself was named after the fictional island of California from a popular novel of the early 1500s, the Sergas de Esplandian, no doubt capitalizing on the stories of Christopher Columbus and the Reconquista of Spain. In the story, the mythic queen Calafia rules over the large, rich island filled with strong, powerful women, akin to the tales of the ancient Greek Amazons. Calafia and California are amalgamations of the Arabic words Caliph and Khalifa, usually denoting rulers of an Islamic caliphate. It is unclear if Carrillo believed in the myth, but what we do know is that he was tasked with sailing up the distant, left side of the peninsula to try and find evidence of riches, document native civilizations, establish friendly relations with said civilizations, and find a rumored water passage that connected eastern and western worlds. 
Cabrillo would also be granted the rich trading rights of any area he discovered, and most likely lead to conquest if things seemed favorable. Cabrillo set off in June 1542 with three ships, his flagship San Salvador and the vessels La Victoria and San Miguel. Cabrillo's ships made slow progress going against a strong, south-traveling current, which would plague most of his journey. But by the end of August, Cabrillo passed the last known point of Iola's expedition and was now in uncharted waters. Cabrillo notes beautiful landscapes, large trees, and signs of habitation, such as smoke from domestic fires. By late September, Cabrillo landed in what is today San Diego, and had his first encounter with the natives of California, most likely from the Kumie tribe. It is stated that a crowd of natives gathered to look at the ship, but once the Spaniards came close to shore in landing boats, most fled except for the three bravest individuals. Upon stepping on shore, they gave Carrillo and his men gifts, no doubt a standard native practice for the area concerning strangers. But it seems they also had an ulterior motive. They told Cabrillo's interpreters through signs that they were men that looked just like him to the lands of the interior, most likely referring to the Coronado expedition more than 400 miles away that had ended several months earlier. On a side note, this incident details the vast trade and information systems of the Americas, which I have recorded before in previous videos. Cabrillo picked up on the fact that the three natives seemed apprehensive, and the encounter was a little tense, but nothing else seemed to come of it. So Cabrillo returned to his ship and gave orders for his men to rest and resupply. That night, some of Cabrillo's men went ashore to do some fishing when they were ambushed by native archers. Three of the men were wounded, but all made it back to the ship. Cabrillo decided to move the San Salvador the next day deeper into the harbor to cover a scouting party. The party was sent ashore in the morning and explored the area behind the beach. They reportedly found two small children, and while they couldn't communicate, gave them shirts as a gift of goodwill and let them go. The peace offering seemed to have its intended effect. The following day, the account describes that three large natives came to speak to Cabrillo's men and reiterated what was mentioned earlier about the Coronado expedition, but this time they added how they heard that these men were killing the natives and that they were afraid that Cabrillo would do the same to them and their families. Cabrillo and his men must have assured them that they were only there for peace as there were no more recorded attacks that day. Cabrillo noted that the natives called his men guacamal, which is not understood what it means, but is most likely something along the lines of some type of stranger. This first meeting between Carrillo and the natives of California did not bode well for the expedition. Be sure and stay tuned for the second part of Carrillo's journey, where the Spanish run into bad luck, followed by disaster. Make sure you're subscribed for future historical content and consider supporting the channel on Patreon. It helps pay the bills and other features that allow me to spend more time and energy creating videos. Also, there are a few days left in my gift card giveaway, which I described in a previous video, so check it out. Lastly, I would like to thank all my subscribers for continuing to support the channel, and a thank you to those here for the first time. I'm Eric the Lone Pine Wolfman, and remember, never stop learning. <laughs>